The AMD Ryzen 22 and 2400G APUs will be released to the world next Monday, the 12th of February, so it's no surprise that we're seeing leaks start to pop up about how they perform. Yesterday, I saw a strange video posted on the AMD subreddit where someone scrolls through a blurry firestrike result of a Ryzen APU overclocked to 4.5GHz. The result wasn't linked anywhere, and only a single result shows up on Google, so naturally I was sceptical. As it turns out, hidden results don't show up in searches and can only be seen in comparisons. So I knew what I had to do. The next day, I threw together a little Python script to try thousands of different page IDs and search for traces of the Ryzen 2400G. Believe it or not, there's a lot of results posted to the 3D mark, so to get results quickly, I only searched between 6th and 9th of February. My program went through 16,000 pages of results, and by the time it was finished, I thought I was going to get IP banned for DDoSing them. Who knew it would take 10 megs per second of bandwidth? But whatever, the point is, I dug up well over 200 results from the new APU, which I think you'd agree is a nice sample size to see how it performs. I also collected the clock speeds for the processor and graphics of each run, but keep in mind 3 Mark's collection method is a bit dodgy. For example, it lists the base clock of my i7 as being the stock 4.0GHz, when in reality it's overclocked to 44 on all cores, which 3 Mark recognises as being the boost speed. The 2400G, of course, has stock clocks of 3.6 base and 3.9 boost, and while modern GPUs constantly change their frequency based on things like temperature, load and power draw, AMD lists the graphics frequency at around 1250MHz. In the results, the mean clocks were around 3.7GHz on the CPU and 1210MHz on the GPU. The average fire strike scores were 3100 on the graphics and 10100 physics, which I think you'd agree are mighty respectable for integrated graphics. This posts it around a slightly older i7 on the CPU side of things and an NVIDIA GT1030 on the GPU. And sure, the GT1030 isn't exactly the cutting edge of graphics tech, but it's still good enough to run many popular games if you can deal with lower resolutions and settings. But what about overclocking? This could give us an interesting look into what to expect from Ryzen Plus when it drops in a couple months. After all, the biggest drawback of the current Ryzen chips is the clock speed, which seems to be limited to around 4GHz in practical situations. Well, there are a few results at around the 4.1GHz mark, but the star of the show was that 4.55GHz result. It does seem that it's legit after all, and with a beastly physics score to match. None of the other results even come close, so I'll remind you to take all of this with a pinch of salt, and we'll see proper overclock results after release. As for the GPU side, there were quite a few overclocks above 1500MHz, and the best graphics score happens to come from the run with the 4.5GHz CPU overclock. Someone managed to get the GPU to over 2GHz, so their score was fairly average. Some people had massively underclocked parts for some reason, including a few runs which managed normal scores, despite apparently running at 1GHz. So yeah, like I say, pinch of salt. In conclusion, I think this is great news for both AMD and PC gaming as a whole. Years ago, I got my first gaming PC with an AMD APU in it, and while its integrated graphics were ahead of the competition, its processor couldn't hope to compete with the, even the i5s of the time. APUs are a great starting point, and more than enough for light and budget gaming, but I think a lot of people will eventually upgrade to a discrete GPU, and I reckon the powerful processor in the 2400G will be able to keep up with graphics cards for a while to come. It's also worth noting that, back in the day, AMD APUs used a different socket to their FX counterparts, so upgrade-wise, you're in a bit of a dead end. But now the unified AM4 platform means you can start with a quad-core APU and upgrade to an octa-core beast in the future. So, I hope you found some of this interesting. I'll leave a link to the Google Doc containing the data in the description. Keep in mind I removed the runs that had other discrete GPUs or failed to get a score for the sake of consistency. Catch you later!